Good morning, everybody. Unfrequented world. And yes, we are back in the bush today. We're sneaking along in the electric car. I'm on the same road system uh, that we did the Pinewater Creek uh, track trap video. Only we're going to be branching off and going probably another 15 kilometers further back. Some of these roads, they get a little worse every year, so I don't know if I can get into where I want to. I've got a really nice set of ponds that I want to drone uh, in a real nice moose area. So hoping that we're going to see a moose today and uh, that we can get into these ponds. So the GoPro is running here at the front of the vehicle just in case something runs across the road. And it's also been brought to my attention that I shouldn't mention exactly where I'm putting out trail cameras and things for two reasons, which I don't know. I just, I like to think the best of everybody, but obviously somebody could steal my trail cameras or mess with them and B, they could uh, mess with the research. You know, there are a lot of guys who have nothing better to do than to say, Hey, this guy's out here. Let's go mess with them. So I'm from now on, I'm going to not say exactly I might point out the area to you guys within a mile or two, but I'm not going to say exactly where I put out the gear. I'm going to leave some of this GoPro footage in here for you guys. Uh, I know lots of guys like to look through and find stuff. If you can see something hiding behind a tree, then good for you. I'm looking as I'm driving. I don't see anything. If you do, point it out to us though, and we'll definitely check it out. I don't know about anybody else's experience with their GoPro. I have a three and I loved it. But this six, man, it just keeps freezing all the time. And I've tried six different video cards. The firmware has been updated. Uh, man, I don't know what to do with this stupid thing. I contacted the company. Oh, we'll give you $100 off the version seven. Uh, no, this still has warranty. Fix it. So that's going to be my luck. We're going to be driving along and this thing's going to lock up on me. Um, when it does that, I have to pop the battery out of it. There is no other way to get it uh, functioning again. I don't know. It just uh, makes me think. I don't think I would ever spend the money on another GoPro. Also wanted to mention that uh, you can really feel the change in season coming now. It was 2 degrees Celsius this morning. So I know we're only August... 10th today but uh, you can feel it falls coming So I also purchased a set of antenna range finders for the controller, for the drone. So we're going to try that out right now. Off through here is a big swamp that I want to drone for you guys. So we'll throw the extenders on and give it a go. So there they are mounted on the drone antennas. Let's give it a go and see how it works.
So actually, I think these things worked very well. I was out uh, over a thousand meters, didn't have any problems, brought the drone a little lower into the swamp, didn't lose signal. I did keep the, uh, you have to remember to keep these dishes pointed in the direction that your drone is uh, straight out from you, otherwise you can lose signal. I didn't have any issues with that. I think they worked really well. So more testing required, but so far for 12 bucks, I'm impressed. Something else I wanted to talk about uh, with you guys is uh, carcasses. How many deer or moose or bear carcasses have you found in the wild? As a hunter with 40 plus years in the bush, I'm gonna tell you, I've never just found a full carcass of a deer or a bear. You do find where the hunters drop off scraps. So guys will throw their hide and stuff right off these back roads. So if you're 10 meters you know, off the road, that's a hunter did that, or a poacher. Um, so when something wild dies up here, it gets scavenged and it's gone within a week usually. But there was one time about six years ago where I found a full moose carcass. It was strange because every bone was still there. It was as if the old moose had just dropped dead and the wolves and whatever didn't scavenge it. Even if I remember correctly, there might have been a little bit of porcupine work on the antlers. The porcupines like to come and chew on the antlers to get calcium. There might have been a little bit, but... So I don't know what that moose died of, but nothing touched it. I even took pictures, it was so strange. And I'll see if I can find those, and I'll put them in the video right here. But other than that, one time, guys, in 40 years, I've never found a full carcass of anything just lying in the bush. I've never seen a bear skull. We do find antler drops, and usually the moose shed their antlers in the same places every year, or the same set of swamps or whatever. But uh, even those are hard to find, so it's pretty rare. Yeah, my daughter says, well, that moose must have died of some sickness and nothing wanted to eat it. I said, no, I have another another theory. I watched the documentary uh, on cow mutilations, and apparently nothing eats the cows that have been mutilated. I said, well, maybe this moose was abducted by aliens. So there's another really big swamp right there and I always uh, hunt that back hill for deer but we're not going to film that today. I got a special spot I want to take you guys into, a nice little set of moose swamps, maybe another five miles back from here. Look at the deer flies just following along. I got to get out and drone in a few minutes. Oh, that's going to be nasty. I had to make a pit stop here. Look at that, can't pass those up. <laughs> there's a whole, there's lunch right here. <laughs> Probably a bear off in the woods too. <laughs> ha, couldn't pass that up. <laughs> now that's funny. <laughs> Who taught you to do that? <laughs> He likes raspberries. <laughs> Here, Gage. Gage. There you go. Alright, so we made it where I was trying to get. Just over that hill there is a big set of swamps that goes for a mile down that way. Comes from up above here. There might be a pond or two up above if the beaver dams haven't broken. And this is all really thick hemlock uh, forest right on the edge of the swamp here and full of moose and bear. The bear like to get under these big trees. Sometimes they move in the wind and they create hollows underneath them so they make perfect bear dens. So these hemlock uh, forest, the real tight little spots here where you can't see more than five yards in front of you, they can be quite dangerous. 
again here it's all full of raspberries so we, you do have to be careful because there could be a bear laying down right in there and you wouldn't see it so we're staying out here in the clearing this was a, a log dump from 20 years ago when they were in here logging and uh, we're gonna keep the doors unlocked if we have to run back to the truck and get in we will I don't think that's ever gonna happen but 